This demonstration will show you how to use the Get List Item Reference wizard within a K2 workflow. Get List Item Reference is helpful in any business process that requires a reusable reference to a SharePoint list item or group of list items throughout multiple steps of a K2 workflow. For example, a shipping related workflow may be configured to update the properties of an order item and then move the item to a shipped folder or list once the order has been processed. You might also use it in a process designed to manage job postings for an organization that requires posting jobs internally for a period of time, then releasing them to the public. Let's take a look at a small piece of an application that makes use of the Get List Item Reference step. This process requires a job posting to be available to employees internally for a short period of time, then allow human resources to release the posting to the public by copying it to an external job postings list if the job is not filled by internal staff after an expiration date. The data setup for this example will use two separate lists for the job posting items. One list will contain all job postings for display internally called internal job postings. The other list will be used to house a copy of job postings released for display to the public called external job postings. Each list will organize the postings by department, so I've set up a simple page that allows a human resources employee to manage the internal postings by department, designate items they want released to the external list, and run a workflow to copy all postings that are set for release for a specific department and are not already copied to the external list. Finally, I'll mark the items as released in the internal list so they don't get copied the next time the workflow runs. And since I'm configuring the workflow to run by department, I've created the K2 application under the department's SharePoint list, so let's take a look at what I've pre-configured in this workflow so far. To begin, let's look at the workflow in the case where we're not using the Get List Item Reference. To configure the Copy List Item step, you can get a List Item reference by configuring the Browse to List Item option, which allows you to plug in filter values to help the wizard find the specific list item or items that you need for this step. When you use this option, the List Item reference will only be available inside this wizard, which means you'll have to run the same configuration steps for the Update List Item step that fires next in this workflow. So backing up a little bit, this is where Get List Item Reference can be used in an earlier step to create the reusable reference object to this list item. I'll drop Get List Item Reference onto my design canvas by grabbing it from the List Items Group ribbon menu at the top of the page. The list items for this workflow live under a subsite called Human Resources in the Denalix Portal Site Collection, so I'll ensure that the Site Collection setting is set to the Portal Site and then I'll select the Human Resources subsite. From here, I know the list items are in the internal job postings list, so I'll select that, and then we'll move on to the next window. On the Specify Filters window, you can plug in as many filter values as you need here by using the Context Browser fields or entering in values to help the wizard find one specific list item or multiple items that match the filter. I want to perform work on the job postings for the department that the user selected, so I'll use the title column from the department's item reference in the context browser by dragging it over to the department field in the drop window. Make sure to put a check in the checkbox next to each desired field that you want to include in the filter so it's enabled for use. I also want to make sure I'm only copying something that is marked OK to release, so I'll set this field to Yes. And finally, I want to make sure I don't copy anything that is already released for this department, so I'll set the released filter to No. At the bottom of the window, I'll enter in a meaningful reference name for this list item like Internal Job Postings Reference. This is what's going to appear for the other workflow steps in the Context Browser, which I'll show you next. Now, in looking at the Copy List Item wizard, I can select to use the Internal Job Postings Reference by enabling the Use a List Item that is referenced in this workflow configuration setting. Then, on the next windows, make sure that the destination list is set to the external job postings list with property values specified as needed. Moving on to the Update List Item step, 
I can open it up to the reference configuration page just like the copy list item wizard and select use a list item that is referenced in this workflow. Then select the internal job postings reference that's available. And finally, all I want to do is mark the list item as released, so I'll make sure that that's selected. At this point, you can see how the Get List Item Reference step is a handy wizard to use at design time, especially in larger workflow situations where you want to lessen the amount of steps to build a workflow, as well as promote a bit of reuse in your workflow design. So now let's run this workflow and take a look at how it works. I'll start off by looking at the external job postings list to show you that it's currently empty. Again, this list is the destination for the copy event that fires off in the workflow. So next, let's go over to the internal job postings management page. This page gives a little more context to the actions by allowing us to view the internal postings by filtering on a department. The sales department has two job listings that have gone past the expiration date, but have not yet been released to the external list. So let's run this workflow off the sales department list item by selecting K2 workflows from the item context menu to run the workflow manually. And from the K2 workflows page, I'll select released expired internal job postings workflow and run it against the sales department. This should run fairly quickly, so once it completes, we'll jump over to the external job postings list. Here you can see that the two listings that were designated to be copied are listed externally now. The last thing we'll check on is back in the internal job postings list. You can see that the two list items still exist in this list because we did a copy, and the released column was set to yes by the workflow for the sales department. Thank you for watching this demo on how to use the Get List Item Reference Wizard. We hope you have a better understanding of how and when you can use this workflow step within processes used by your organization.